Projections at any angle. Now this one is a tough one. We have what, 10, 16 marks. Now keep in mind, these questions used to be in the old spec M2 papers, which allowed you to use conservation of en energy principle, which makes some of the parts a lot easier, but we don't learn that anymore, well in normal maths anyway, but we can still apply the same, well, the concepts we learn in normal maths to still solve the problem. So let's see how we address that. So it says a small ball projected from O at a target T at speed root 27 AG. T is a horizontal and vertical distance of 9A and 6A. I've just abbreviated everything. There's so much writing, man. I'm just running out of pens out here. Uh, the ball is modeled as a particle moving free under gravity. Show that 10 squared minus 6, 10 plus 5 is 0. All right, so with all of these uh, 2D projections, always resolve, just like forces, to make sure that everything is pointing up, down, left, right. And this is the first thing that kind of allows further mathematicians to be at an advantage, even though they wouldn't use it in all maths, is we just consider the um, uh, velocity, we would consider, because this, resolving this is just a pain, right? So putting sine and cos, and then, uh, so looking at kinetic energy and gravitational potential energy, uh, all of that stuff just makes all of this a lot easier. But anyway, for us, we have this opposite side being 27 ag sine theta. Yes, the opposite side, and this is going to be root 27 ag cos theta. Right. Once we've done that, everything's up, down, left, right. It's looking good. The next thing we do is we consider the vertical and the horizontal separately. Okay as we did in the previous question where we looked at projecting the pi core from the ledge on the hill. If you haven't seen that, definitely recommend you go back to that one because that is a tough one. Now in the vertical axes, the pi core is moving against gravity, okay? So it's been projected upwards, so we're gonna take upwards to be positive, which means gravity is minus 9.8. Or if you look down here, they want us to use minus g. Now we're focusing at t. At t, s is 6a, because this is s is 0, where you project from, so you have 6a. u is root 27 adj sine theta. We don't know the velocity there, we have minus g. And this, the time, is what connects between the horizontal and the vertical, because it doesn't matter which axes you're looking at, whether you project horizontally or vertically, the uh, time is the same, isn't it? So we're gonna call that capital T. Now in the horizontal, there's no acceleration, so that's just distance is speed times time. Now the horizontal distance at T is 9A. The horizontal speed is root 27 adj cos theta times T. Okay, now what connects all of these is S U A T, S is U T plus half A T squared, so S, is u t, whoops, yeah, u t plus half of a, so minus g over 2 t squared. And next thing we're going to do is going to replace the t's with this. Now, uh, what was I going to say? Oh, yeah, these parametric equations, that's all it is. You're rewriting the vertical displacement in terms of t and the horizontal displacement in terms of t. So if you just think of it as parametric equations, it just makes your lives a lot easier. So here, t is 9a divided by root 27ag cos theta. So subbing that in, we get 6a is uh, root 27 adj sine theta times this, which I'm going to put the 9a here. Uh, I've already given myself that much space. Uh, I'll just go right times 9a all over root 27 ag cos theta. Yes, yeah, so that's my t minus g over 2 t squared. So we're going to square this. I'm going to write g there. So just make sure I don't mess this up. 81 a squared g. So 
So that's the numerator divided by two lots of whatever that squared is. Now when you square that, the root goes. So we're just going to get 27 AG. And then we're going to get cos squared. Now I'm going to do something cheeky here because I would do this automatically. Now that's 1 over cos squared. 1 over cos squared is sec squared. Sec squared is 1 plus tan squared. Okay, so this we're going to replace with 1 plus tan squared. And that's very standard when it comes to these parametric equations questions. So, hoping that I don't go off the side here. I'm just going to write 1 plus tan squared. We just got to clean all of this up. All right. Luckily, this cancels. Sine over cos is just tan. Here, my g's cancel. A cancels. Which then means that all of these A's cancel. Cross, cross, cross. All right, without making it too messy, let's just clean this up. So we have, we could divide by 3. Uh, I won't do that just yet. 6 is tan 9. Minus 81 over 27, which is uh, 3, isn't it? Am I bugging? Yeah, never in doubt. 3... 1 plus tan squared. Should we just expand it out now? So minus 3, minus 3 tan squared. Are we slowly getting towards this? Perhaps. Uh, move this over so we get 3 tan squared. Move that over, minus 9 tan plus 9 is 0. Uh, and then I am missing a number, which is annoying, because that when I divide that by 3, I get tan squared minus 3 tan theta plus 3. I am missing a number somewhere over the rainbow. It's not looking good. Where would that have been? Minus g over 2 over here. t squared cos squared, that is fine. 9, uh, 3, 9. Where am I getting that? I've written it properly. I know I have. Oh, I see it. It's a 2 there. I forgot to double that. Oh my days. Imagine. So this is actually 54. So it's 81 over 54. This guy, man. 81 divided by 54 is 3 over 2. So what have I got? I've got 6 is 9 tan theta minus 3 over 2, 1 plus tan squared. Okay, times everything by 2. I mean, you could divide through by 3 or just divide everything by 3 over 2. Uh, what would that be? That would be uh, 12 over 3, 4 is uh, 3 to 6 tan theta. Then that's gone minus 1 minus tan squared. Move that all over and I get tan squared minus 6 tan theta plus 5. There you go. Now that's shown. <laughs> okay, we got there in the end, Mike. As you can see, I don't plan the answers to these. I just find a good question and I just do it, innit? Uh, right, I feel like this is going to be important for this part. Usually this kind of stuff is, is important. Um, so I don't want to rub out everything. But let's just see what it says. Find the value, find tan theta 1 and tan theta 2, where theta 1 and theta 2, well, theta 1 is bigger than theta 2. I'm just going to do it as part of this. So we have u squared minus 6u plus 5 is 0. So we get u, u, 5, 1, minus, minus, u is 1, u is 5. So 
we have tan of theta 1 is 1 and tan of theta 2 is 5. Okay. Now, uh, it says the particle is projected at theta 1. Well, that means that it's projected at 45 degrees. Uh, show the time of flight is this. So that's to do with this, isn't it? So our time of flight. And it just means we have to simplify the whole thing. All right, so let me not eliminate the whole thing. Let's uh, write down what we have. So we've done part A and we've done part B. So right now we're in part C, so that was my part B. We have theta 1 is 40... Oh wait, hold on. The pike was projected at theta 1 and theta 1 is bigger. My bad. We're actually using the other one. Tan of theta 2 is 5. Okay, so actually, I saved myself more mistakes. Tan of theta 2, well, not really, because I haven't actually made a mistake yet. Although my students will probably be putting Neil does mistakes in the chat just for not uh, putting over 2. It's my experience all the time. Uh, where am I? Here. T is 9A over root 27AG cos theta. Right, how do we use that to work out this time of flight? So basically we need to work out what cos of theta 2 is, isn't it? How do we do that? I think the best way is to use the triangles here. I really hope I don't need any more information from what I've just rubbed out. So if we use the triangle, we have theta 2 tan is the, so it's 5 over 1, right? Opposite 5 adjacent 1. So let me root 5 squared plus 1 squared, 26. So cos will be uh, 1 over root 26. So we have t is 9a over root 27ag times cos theta, which is 1 over root 26. Okay. So somehow we're going to get this 78a uh, all over g. Right, now, because these are both roots, we can kind of bring this all into one. I'm going to do something cheeky here in a second, actually. So this root 26 can actually come to the top. So we have 9 root 26, A, all over root 27 AG. Now, can you see the answer has it all under one root? All we need to do is make sure all of these, these two basically, are inside a root. I can rewrite 9 as root 81. I can rewrite that as root of a squared. Yeah, because a and a is a positive constant, so we can just do that. Which means I can rewrite all of this under one root. 9 is 81. Well, 9 is not 81. 9 is root of 81. Times 26. Times a squared. All over. And this is already under a root. So this a cancels. And now I'm praying that 26 times 3 is 78. So 81 times 26 over 27. Yes! Oh my god. This is frustrating. 78a over g. And that's shown. Find the speed of the particle immediately before it hits t. Find the speed over here. Right, what do we know over here? We know it's horizontal speed because the horizontal speed never changes. Okay, there's no horizontal acceleration. Part D, I decided to just clear the board. It was stressing me out. Find the speed of the particle immediately before it hits T. Right, at any point of this motion, we know that the horizontal speed is root 27 ag okay so we can quickly work out the velocity horizontally as being root 27 ag cos theta okay we just need to work out what that vertical speed is okay so we have the horizontal what's the vertical we're gonna get we're gonna have to go back to suva suva right 
we know S is 6A. The speed vertically was root 27 AG sine theta. Uh, we want to know what that is, and that is minus G. We're not interested in that. What connects all of those is V squared. Uh, v squared equals U squared plus 2AS. Uh, yeah. And I don't, I guess, I guess we need to work out what sine and cos theta was. All right, so cos theta was 1 over root 26. So remember from that triangle, we had tan was 5, 1, root 26. So cos was 1 over root 26. Sine is 5 over root 26. So we have v squared is u squared, which would just give us 27 ag sine squared theta plus 2 a. So if you times that by 2, minus 2 g s. 6a. Right. So v squared is sine squared. Sine squared. So sine would be 5 over 26, which when you square it is 25 over 26. Minus 12ag. Now I know this is 3 marks. It's because if you do further maths, when, you know, in the previous spec, they could use the conservation of energy. Yeah. Um, and then it would have been a quick, just like kinetic energy, potential energy, easy calculation. We can still do it without using that in normal mass, which is why I'm doing all this. In the real exam, it might be a bit more than three marks. All right, what we got? We got, uh, where's my calculator? 27 times 25 over 26 minus 12, uh, 363 over 26. AG, and then we root that, right? However, um, I guess we might as well. So that's the velocity vertically. So the speed, let's do the speed squared for now, is going to be this, which cos theta, I guess we need to work that out as well, don't we? <sighs> All right, so the velocity Horizontally is going to be root 27 ag times cos theta, which is 1 over root 26, which when we combine it will be root of 27 over 26 ag. So now my speed, see how my pen has been running out of ink as I've gone along. My speed squared is going to be this squared, 363 over 26 ag plus 27 over 26 ag. And I'm praying that it gives me a nice number, plus 27 over 26, 15. Absolutely beautiful, mate. So my speed squared is 15 ag. So my speed is root 15 ag. And my pen is dead. Okay, bedtime for me after this, for sure. Guys. If you learned something today, I'd really appreciate if you hit the like button and subscribe for more content. This is going to be the hardest thing they could potentially ask you in a normal maths A-level paper. So save it as part of a playlist or something like that. Um, and yeah, if you're interested in my A-level maths courses, details are in the description. And feel free to join the Learn Gang Reddit page if uh, you want to submit your own questions and get feedback from the community. I'll see you guys in the next video. Nice.